here we go. Now this episode of the artistry of is a special one. This is going to be an interview from um, Richard T., contemporary pianist, back in 1984 with Stephen Gadd. Um, so spon- this is sponsored to you exclusively by Bo Knows Music. Only Bo Knows Music dot com had the cojones, the cojones, okay, to put this out. Now, I don't know how long this is going to last. It is what it is. Y'all know what time it is, okay? Anyway, Richard T., who was he? Because he passed away in uh, 94, I believe. Nope, 93. He passed away July 21st, 1993. He graduated from high school, uh, the High School of Music and Arts in New York City and attended the Manhattan School of Music. He's better known as a studio and session musician. And uh, he read, he led a jazz ensemble, you know, through the years. Like, now, dude is a beast. I'm not going to talk your ear off with this. I want to make this intro as quick as possible because the actual interview is about an hour long. So, we're going to get into it. Richard T., the man, okay? I came across this on YouTube and I was like, yo man, this was powerful. Like he he is a dynamic musician man and I swear like I wish I could have met him, you know. There's a lot of cats that's like that too. And you know, I'm still out there, so eventually, hopefully I'll get to you. But this one I won't. So uh without any further ado, cue the music. Let me Introduce you to Bo Miles, a unique and likable guy. Everyday life, friends and family makes up the artist dream. One. Uh. Can you tell me, how did you get started? Well, my mother played a little piano. Just a, just a tidge. And we had an old upright in my house. And you know, it was a small one, and I used to climb up on it and, you know, try to play something. But, uh, you know, she, after a while, she would teach me, you know, a few tunes here and there. I mean, first of all, I had to act like I wanted to play. You know, right. I really had to show interest right. for her to, you know, for her to teach me certain tunes. Right. And then uh, she said, well, if you're really sincere about playing, Mm-hmm. And so I'll, she said, I'll get you a new piano, which I still have to this day. Right. I've got a console spin it, and uh, that's when I started taking classical music. Uh, classical, private classical lessons when I was about five years old. What did your mother teach you? You mentioned that uh, your mother taught you some songs. Uh... She taught me a couple of tunes. Uh, one tune I, I did on my second album, uh, Natural Ingredients, called Fitting Song. Well, the way, the way she taught me was... Uh,
classical music? I took that for about 15 years. 13, did that 15 years. that help you? Did, did you look forward to that? That helped me, uh, well, one thing about classical music, about Bach especially, it taught me all my fingering, all my dexterity. Well, you, and you have to have that for whatever you need to play. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'd be, you'd be playing on your fingers like this. Right. You right. have to be able to... That's what classical music will do for me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'd be walking on my knuckles right, trying to do right, these things. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. All that, all that, plus, plus even fingering. Because lots of times people can't play with this finger, this finger, and this finger. These two fingers will catch hell. And your classical music, classical music will have you play every finger that you have. And it was not mm -hmm. so much three fingers here, it's mm -hmm. the whole ten fingers. Mm -hmm. And when you have... Um, they have trills in classical music with just these two fingers. Well, you know, because you play keyboard yourself. These two fingers sometimes can really make you want to just sort of use, use something else instead. Right, right, but these right. two fingers are so always... recommend classical to the young student that sure. wants to learn and it's for, so for somebody that's really serious about their playing yeah yeah and it, it will also help you to read because classical music has no no changes just notes just notes right. you know you, if you want to know what key it is you look at you look at your time signature and after that it's just notes left hand right hand all the way through double right. shafts double flats right you don't know you know there's no key there's no e flat chord flat nine for one bar it's, it's just notes right and that will determine you know your reading right. Do you recommend using a metronome? Should it be done All exercise so should be done with a metronome. All exercises. To, 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 to help you with your tempo. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much tempo you think you have. When you play the metronome, you'll know exactly just how much your tempo is. Learn how to play anything you play with a metronome. So when you start playing tunes, you're very, it, it, will, it will make you conscious of tempo. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't use a metronome. You swear to God, you're just grooving and playing right. a metronome. And you, when you start playing, if you ever have a tape recorder, and you play, you tap your foot from the very time you started, and when you get through, you're, you're going twice as fast, most of the time. Mm -hmm. Without a metronome. You, mm -hmm. you, just, you, know, you just start to pick up speed, depending on how, how hard the thing is, or, or whatever the passage might be a little hard, you, you're liable to skim through it. You're liable to hurry up and get through there, right. and before you know right. it, your right. tempo is picked up. You don't right. feel it, right. but it's there, so always play the metronome. Always really and if you play metronome long enough, you know when the tempo starts to move. Right. Right. I mean, just like that, you'll know it. Mm -hmm. So last time I played much, you know, like, give me an idea, just mm. give me a little, and you play something, you play. You try to pull. Of so many different ways you can play that metronome. Mm -hmm. So when you start, when you when you want to be fancy and stuff, you're very conscious of that, of that time, mm -hmm. and you will not move it. You will just stay right there. Mm -hmm. That brings me to the studio. Do you always work with a click track in the studio, or is um, doing jingles? We work with a click it's track. It's always a click track. Always a click track. Because last time they had to they had to sync it to the film or something. Right. It's always okay. a click track in jingles. Uh, recording regular dates. dates. Recording dates. Uh, Sometimes you work with a click track, sometimes you don't. And never mind the, the, the label of jazz doesn't and this it, and that, but this, this musician. You can still have it feel natural even with the click track? Because sure music, can. doesn't it tend to speed up sometimes or slow down depending on um, the it's intensity not of it? It's, it's not, it's not never? supposed to, no. I mean, natural speed up sometimes is okay, but when you, when the, the purpose, the guy wants a purpose. He wants, the, he wants the song to be exactly the same tempo from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. It's just like patting your foot, except mm -hmm. you just don't pat any faster. Right. You know, right. And then that click track should be there. I mean, a lot, a lot, especially drummers. Drummers can play time, and when they ask you to do a fill, that fill will bother them because they'll they'll start to fill early. Right. Well, somebody like Steve Gadd, he can play with, with a click track and put the fill wherever you want it. Yeah. On the sixteenth of a note, on the thirty-second of a note, and make it sound real natural. Mm -hmm. And keyboard players, you know, they're not required to play that many fills, but just to keep time, 
you know, you, you, you play time, and, the, and that, that click track, you know the click track isn't going to move. Right. So if you, if you use, I'm used to playing with a metronome since I was a kid. So it's just like playing with a metronome. Mm -hmm. The only thing moving is us. When did you get into rhythm and blues? Was it the same time or after? Or? Well, rhythm and blues was, at the time, it was called, I called it Boogie Woogie. That's what, that was, that's what was out when I was coming okay. out. You know, was, I played Boogie Woogie since I was, since I could crawl up on a piano. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, even though I was playing classics, classical music, I still loved my Boogie Woogie. Later on, it became R&B. <laughs> From Boogie Woogie playing that you acquired the dominant left hand bass playing? Well, That's... the left hand, you mean the way I play with, with chords and right hand? Yeah. That, uh, I, I really don't know exactly when that came about, but I remember when I was playing with, uh, as, I got a, as I got to be a young teenager, 12, 13 years mm -hmm. old, I, I would back up a lot of singing groups. Mm -hmm. And it was usually a singing group and me. So I try to, I try to make myself sound as big as possible. Outside of outside of size, uh, <laughs> um, try to sound like an orchestra. Right. And an orchestra always had whatever's going on background music on the right hand, and you always ha always had to have a bass line somewhere. So that's the way I always played. You know, mm -hmm. like the old grooves. <laughs> I just like that way of playing. You know, whatever I had to do, I would incorporate it with this hand, but I, I would never play like chords. It'd be like... Well, that's the way I've always played. Uh, if there was a bass player to cover that? If there's a bass player there, then it's going to be two, play two bass players, two my bass left hand and him. I mean, that's just my normal way of playing, you know. <laughs> That's just me. I can't help it. You know? And I doubt it very. I doubt very seriously if it will ever change. So, if you're playing the melody, in addition to the chords I and the bass that. line, I always try to play the melody and chords in your right hand. That's all incorporated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, if, it's, if I have to, I'll, you know, somebody says play the chord right. and plays. But if somebody says just play, right. that's the and way that I play. <laughs> start doing recording dates? I started doing recording dates, I guess I was just about 17, 16, 17, just before I came out of high school. Were you nervous on those early dates? Uh, I was a little nervous because I was brought up to, the, to uh, this is where I was brought up. When you play something, first time you see it on a paper, mm -hmm. you're supposed to play it like you know it, like you've been playing it for 50 years. Naturally, you've never seen it before, so you look, you kind of like skim the music through and say, uh-huh, okay. And you sit down and you play, and you just go right through it, zoom. And uh, I found out it's not quite like that. Out here. <laughs> <laughs> you have enough time to make a lot of mistakes, you know. Right. But I still, I still like the way I was, the way, the way that's the way I was taught. Mm -hmm. 
and it's beneficial to me, so maybe I can help somebody else. Since I know the whole world is made that way. Right. That's the right. way I so that's the that's the impression my classical teacher told me. Mm -hmm. When you get out here, you're gonna you know, when you when you time for you to do your recitals, which I've done a I've, I've done a few when I was a youngster, I did my recitals, you sit down and you play. And you don't say, Oops, I made a mistake. You just run right through it just like you've been playing. Like, you you play like you wrote it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what it is. No time for mistakes, you know, read everything through. You know, know your music. You know, know if you know your music, you, you're able to read it. Read anybody's music. So when you when somebody says, "Hey, play this," you know, pull something out the thing. Play mm -hmm. this. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the tempo? What you're tempo ready. do you want? Right. And you start playing. When you go on a date, uh, you're handed a chart. Uh -huh. uh, what do you like to be told about the chart? Uh, well, at first I get the chart. Depend. It depends now. But if the chart has a the chart has a lot of notes on it, which is very, which is very rare. Or it has uh, chord symbols. So sometimes, you know, charts vary. They might have some chord symbols, but, you know, some places where they have, where they have notes. The first thing I say, well, what's the tempo and what do you want? Tell me what you want. That's, the, I mean, first, that's what I got. I got the mm -hmm. answer. What do you want? Right. Uh, after that, uh, is there a singer? Mm -hmm. How's this tune go? So that I don't have the lead sheet on me. Even if, even if the melody is, is penciled in, you know, when you're reading it, you're reading a you're reading a you're reading a, a melody that's sort of stiff. There's no, you know, people don't sing like what you see it on the paper. Mm -hmm. People like take liberties, they sure. back phrase, and they sure. they put little curly cues on the end of a thing, you know. Right. Um, so I always ask, is there a singer? Or can somebody you know sing it or hum it or? If somebody, if it's a, like Grover or somebody, mm -hmm. have somebody play it. So that way, when you start playing, the first thing I, the first thing I would never want to do is start, start, start filling, start making a fill in a song, mm -hmm. and, and it's the wrong part of the phrase, you know, because it's easy to take this, just any any bunch of chords and play and get a groove on it. Mm -hmm. and when you start making fills, you might be filling right where the singer or the or the soloist is playing, and then. It's say like you fill the first two beats of the bar. Mm -hmm. The song starts the first two beats of the bar. Then when you take a space, she's taking a space, or he's taking a space, then it just sounds kind of dumb that all the space went by and nobody like, filled it. Right. Well, if you ask somebody, at least for me, if you ask somebody where does everything go, you know where to put the fills. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know where to, you're there, you're there to, to add your two cents, so to speak. You're not there to play what they sing, otherwise they don't need you there. So you know, you know uh, let me let, let's let's hear somebody. I want to hear how how somebody sings this. Whether they whether they sing the back part of the phrase, front part of the phrase. Uh, do you want a lot of fills? Uh, I don't know yet. All right, fine. Then we'll start. With, I'll I'll just play with a little bit of fill. I'll give you some more fills. I'll give you some more fills, and you know we we'll just sort of sort of see what, what, what where we're going. Can you give with me an it. example of that. Let's, let's take that progression again. <laughs> uh, you would. <laughs> uh, let's see. I saw on David Kenny Rankin. Whatever I da 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 da. It's all down. There's this various, you know, various ways of doing it. Last time depends on who's singing, because you can't you can't make a real soulful fill if somebody's singing it real dainty, you know, real easy. Mm -hmm. You know, this is it's like knowing what kind of fill to put in there. Mm -hmm. And that and the only way I can tell you that is like you know it. If you do it long enough, you know not to not throw a garbage can at a little Tweety bird. <laughs> you, know? right, right. you, know? you just throw a net on it. Right, right. There's a difference of, you know, what what 
uh, what you know, like, so you, so you, so it requires a fill. There's what kind of fill? You know, the is it delicate? Is it up high? Is it up low? You know, sometimes you have to use your imagination. Sometimes it's trial and error too. But you know, if you're in the, somebody said, well, that's what I want, but me, I want a little higher. Well, they don't want a train wreck down there, you know. Right. Oh, it's just a lot of different ways of putting the fill, but but the basic the basic thing is don't put a fill when somebody's singing. What happened to the guy that was singing? You know, what happened? To that? Is, mm -hmm. is he background and you're you're in front? Right. You know, and people, you know, this when I sit when I hit when I especially a keyboard player, if a keyboard player sit down to play, they'll just get on the piano. And just, it's like, oh boy, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, you got all day, you know, right. all the ideas you want to play, you got enough ideas for like 14, 15 tunes. They'll play every fill they know. Sometimes it's just you provide the same fill over and over and over again, so people get used to. Something, something they remember about the song. It might be a film. Yeah. Might not remember the, the way the guy sang or the way the lady sang or, who, or somebody played. It might be just a little film. Mm -hmm. You never know. <laughs> now you got all that space after that. Then you start. <laughs> what happens to the what happens to the space after that? Mm -hmm. You just. If that's the kind of tune it is. You have to know, you know, when you look at the music, you ask, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do? You, you got musicians playing around you. You see what they're going to play also, especially if you have the right kind of musician. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, well, I want this. I want it easy going. So now that's, so now that's, that's all it needs. It just needs that steady pulse. Let somebody else make the feel. You got a guitar player there. You might have two guitar players there. So, then, so let, let them show off and make the film. That's fine. You sit back there and you, you, you're, the, you're part of the meat of the rhythm section. There's you and the drummer, say, on, and the bass player. You got that pulse. That's why I played it with the, that's why I played with the left hand. Now, if somebody's playing drums, mm -hmm. they're going to play their hi-hat, maybe with this. It's the same thing as my right hand. That's the hi-hat. And, and this is your bass line. And maybe, maybe the bass drum is one, two, three, four, one. So I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm trying to cover everything at one time. So somebody said, what do you want me to play? I said, well, just pick anything from this. I might not need that fill. Maybe some, maybe somebody else will play the fill. So I'll just keep, keep that. Oh, is that something that we worked out beforehand? Or no, see, sometimes, sometimes you have to work that out yourself. Depends on who you're working with. But I work with, uh, say, like Eric and, and Marcus and Steve and Ralph. Mm -hmm. We all kind of look at each other and say, okay, now we know when we get to the end of the song, Eric Gill always takes all the fills. I know that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I just don't, there's no point in starting the fire when there's no need to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just play it all in the front. Right. You know, just when you work with people, you know what, you know what, they, you know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And it's like making, making somebody else's job easier. Right. And last times we overdub, uh, I'll, I'll, play, I'll play the whole song through. Eric, come in, Eric Gill will come in next week, put his guitar part on. And start doing fills, yeah. and when you hear it back, I made a little fill here and there, but it never got. It sounded like I answered him. Mm -hmm. But that's like knowing who you're working with, and, mm -hmm. and you know, knowing the song, and knowing maybe like knowing who's you know, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. No, knowing, knowing who you're playing with, so you know that he likes to fill here or th fill there. So don't, you know, just play what's, play what's required. Right. Don't overplay. Uh, if anything, you can always play a little less because there's going to be more things on top of them. You know, they, they'll, they'll put more. They might put strings, they might put an open high synthesizer, all that kind of stuff. So don't try to overload it down here so there's no place else to go. Mm -hmm. Unless you know that, you're, that that's it, that you can go crazy, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of different ways for whatever, whatever the song requires, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it.
Richard, I'd like to get back into the studio, and uh, mm -hmm. I'll be producer for a while. Okay. Okay. Can we take a simple tune like uh, Happy Birthday, mm -hmm. which I'm sure everybody knows. Uh, can you play for me now? Very, very, sim very simply the way it would be done, say, you know, at a little kid's party, basic. <laughs> Uh, bluesier. Okay, the first thing I would do is <clears throat> this was done in 3 4 time, right. or 6 8. Mm -hmm. The first thing I'd do is change the time signature so I'd make it 4 4. Okay. So it'd be 2 3 4. <laughs> more changes right. or substitutions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I still played it four four and it'd be two, three, four. different ways of playing this tune. Uh, substitution changes. Uh, or well, what did you just do there? Well, the first time was the F chord. The F chord. To F over A. Mm -hmm. To C7. Or mm -hmm. well, you can play the same thing, F chord. D flat nine mm -hmm. to C seven. So the D flat nine replaced the uh, F over A. It, 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 it will replace F over A, okay. or you know, or or the. the, the, the that's right. Replace F over A. <laughs> yeah. What else could you do with that? Um, as far as substitutions. Um, Passing tones instead of uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Use just the, um, instead of da, 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 just add the uh, half step up and half step it down. Up, right. Okay, okay. And uh, da, da, da. see the original way. Uh, So I'll just make it instead of make it a seventh. Okay. That's a B flat. Uh, C C over B flat. And then you and resolve then to, and then to resolve the B flat chord. Okay. Uh, e flat nine. And F over C. Any different ways of uh, okay? What was uh, that? Um, a flat thirteenth to G G seventh down by half steps uh, to G flat major seventh mm -hmm. to an F chord. The old Ray Charles ending. Okay. Okay. So the old way was. Um,
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, in addition to the substitutions that you were playing, there was a lot of movement in the inner voices. The that's youth, that's uh, how should I say? It? That's just the way I feel it. I, I, I'll probably play it different every time. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I was talking about before about uh, about playing from from here, from from what you feel. It's emotions. Uh, emotions change, and that's as emotions change, your playing changes. Just you know, ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. Where I would never play the exact same thing twice. Right. Can you explain some of the ways you might change the inner voices? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a little hard to explain. Let, let, let's see. Uh, you start off with your C7. So it's, that would be like a B flat over F to F chord. You know, keeping the keeping the same voice in, keeping the same lead note. Da, da, da. Now this is a variation of different ways you can do it. Uh, D flat nine to C7. Or F over A with passing tones. Passing tones in the bass. Pass, passing tones in the left hand. A to B flat. Chromatically. Chromatically up. Okay, let's see. Okay. Or. To a B9 to C9. Okay. So these are what we're doing is these are different options you can use. Options. These are they're different substitute changes. So it's, it's going to be or or now this is just going from the one chord, the F chord, to the C. These are right. all different. That's all different ways of going from okay. the first bar to the second bar. Okay. And continue on from bar mm -hmm. two to bar three. Okay, well, what'd you just do there? Uh, that was a G, what was it, G, G9? Sorry, E9, E7, raise nine. Mm -hmm. To the F. To the F chord, because uh, Using um, passing tones to the right hand. So there's a lot of half step movement going on. I, I play with a lot of half steps. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's part of my, um, I don't know, part of my way of uh, expressing myself. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, there are so many deviations you can play. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is still half step. And then you'll, you'll put the seventh in the F chord rather than playing the straight. Oh, uh, you can play it straight. But I like it better, but so it's, it's still half step. Yeah, okay. Okay. And continue on uh, to then the. Differences I start uh, uh, F7, then, then, mm -hmm. then C over B flat to B flat. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, e flat mm -hmm. 9. Half whole, whole step, step movement in the bass. Whole step movement. Then, then half step. Mm -hmm. Then to the C. Okay. And then half step chromatically going down from the A flat. So it's an A flat 13. A, A flat 13. Okay. To G9. G9. To G flat major 7. Mm -hmm. To an F chord. Mm -hmm. So it will sound like. I can remember all this. You know? <laughs>
can you incorporate the the boogie woogie feel into that? In the bass? Into, into this tune? Into this tune, yeah. <clears throat> one, two, three. You had some hard questions. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Just outlining the chord. Left hand just playing basically boogie woogie. Uh, the main thing is be able to get back to your tonic uh -huh. when you're playing these boogie lines. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to get caught somewhere where you're not supposed to be. Uh -huh. Right here will still work against that sure baseline. Yeah. When they had the old gospel way of doing it, which is back to three quarter time. So all this is all in four four time. Right. The original way of playing the song is in three quarters. So you want to do. playing something you know. yeah yeah you do a, a a roll in there when you're going from the play it again I'll, I'll stop you with same way same way that what are you doing there in the right hand like a <laughs> trilling effect uh it's a c chord like a c6 basic c6 mm -hmm. Uh, happy birthday to you. Just to, just to give, just to give it some color. Cause I got all that space. Yeah. So it's like, it's like keeping your foot on the pedal. Let's chromatic, chromatically going down. With a C in the bass. Mm -hmm. That's something that's done a lot in, in gospel and, and, and jazz. That it's done, it's done in, uh, and, and some gospel tunes. Well, I know it from Ray Charles. Put it that That's way. Ray Charles. Okay. That's Ray okay. Charles up and down. Mm. Uh, trills, or lots of times they'll, they'll have a. They might do that instead. But can I can you slow that down? Can you put that in slow motion for us? Oh, ah, you would. <laughs> and then it's, it's just simple. Speed it up as I mean, just go. Right. Are there any little besides the the trill that you just showed us? Any mm -hmm. things that are characteristic in gospel? Sometimes with gospel tunes or, or old R and B tunes, you would sort of had an idea where the song was going because they would always lead into it. <laughs> Make you want to go to the A chord, or uh, uh, little little things like that. So I wrote a tune called "My Little Brother and Me." It was uh, but just 
just that kind of feel, those... That's all it is. And I'm not doing it with both hands, but it's still the same thing. of it's a different variation you just use different changes can you play that again just a little slower the old all right one way of playing it is and back so going up whole steps in the bass it's like going from e to a okay e f sharp g sharp a back down now I just use it another form where, where did you just go from the A you went to I went from the A to a B flat diminished okay. and just stayed there and walked down with the right hand I'm still back to the E chord except I have another inversion now now I'm the tonic I'm on the I'm on the five. So many different variations out here. There's so much music going on. There's, somebody once said it's, it's in the air. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that's in the air that you just feel that's out there. Mm -hmm. Life taking chances. Then, it's just out there, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's what you feel and how you take what's out there and mold it into what you, what you're all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that you being a keyboard player, we can play the same thing and make it sound different. Different. Yeah. It's just, just, it's just the way we feel towards. It's the way I feel about this and the way you feel about it. Whether, whether it's part of your, your training, your upbringing, or whatever. It, it all shows in your music when you play. Right. This acoustic is like something that you know, that I know because I was raised on it. Right. And anybody said, what do you know about, about, about acoustic? I said, well, every new one is different, but I know what to look for. Mm -hmm. um, you just can't sit out and just start playing this piano. You have to feel your way around. You have to see the, how the notes are. The, are they even? <laughs> uh, how they work with... Uh, with the pedal, you know, with, the, with your bass notes. Um, just, just the piano itself, how, how the attack is. Like a, a quick attack, a slow attack? I like very quick attack, very because quick only because of the way I play. Uh, uh, sometimes you have a, a note that might ring funny, you have to, you have to know where, where it is, so... You make sure you don't hit it that hard right. when you're recording or whatever. Right. Um, you know, just how a piano sounds when it's real soft. Well, if you really want a, you know, a piano to... A, After you cut that note off. Now up here is different. Mm -hmm. So now you know what the, now you know what this piano can do. So.
testing the piano like that, is that something you might go through before every date? Uh, I do that on every piano. I sit down and play it because I don't have, well, I, I, my piano is at home. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, uh, when you, I mean, whenever you do a gig, whenever you, do, whenever you go to a recording studio, whenever you, whenever you say, well, look, what am I going to play? I, I, you play this. All right, let's see what this can do. You, just, you don't just sit down and start playing because this piano just might fall dead, <laughs> dead away on you. Right. <laughs> you know, then, you know I, try to, I try to play, play it early enough and enough time so if anything is wrong, if anything has to be fixed, like a note is dead or something like that, I can always get a piano. Somebody can call a piano tuner or something can be done. Mm -hmm. But I try to get there as early as I can to find out what it does. What it does. I see what it is, but what do it do? You right, know? right. So you right. want to know. <clears throat> I'd like to discuss uh, modulations for a minute. Okay. Uh, let's get back to happy birthday. All right. Show me different ways I can modulate. I'm in the key of F, okay? We started mm -hmm. out in the key of F, and I want to modulate to, uh, let's say, G. Okay. Let's say G. Different ways I can modulate. There's not too many ways you can modulate, I don't think. way for me mm -hmm. and the only way I see it works uh, uh, happy, instead of going happy birthday, happy birthday. so what we have to do is get to the five of the new key I get the five new key which which is which will be coming from the E flat nine mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Now you play E flat nine to D minor. Okay. To C over D or, or C or A minor over D. A minor over D can work. Okay. Or C. That will lead into. Okay. Are probably other, other modulations, but whatever comes to my mind. I try to make it as smooth as possible, smooth. so it doesn't sound like it. Ha so it doesn't sound like it has any rough edges. So right. That's why I'm, I'm playing. It doesn't sound like I skipped all over the place. It just sounds like I made a smooth transition. Mm. Excuse me, transition. <laughs> <laughs> and then what was that chord? The leading. You just you played the D sus, the D C. D -C. Oh, that's uh, D9 plus 5. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll listen to the G. Right. That's nice. You mentioned Steve Gann a lot. I think he's, one of, <laughs> he's, I think he's one of your favorite drummers. He is, like he's it. my favorite musician, period. Mm -hmm. now, I always call him my little brother. Mm -hmm. and we've been together a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, playing with your eyes open. And that's how we did A train. We did A train in one take, maybe two. Hey, he never. Well, he we knows he knows how we did the song uh, live. You know, we do mm -hmm. it. From, we do it from uh, from something else. Mm -hmm. That's know, Duke Ellington A train. Duke Ellington yeah. A train. But I, when I, when I was in the studio, I said, "Well, Steve, I want to do A train. Just you and I." He said, "Okay, where's the music?" So you don't need the music. You just watch me. I'll tell you when to come in, and I'll tell you when to stop. I said, "Okay," and that was it. Two takes, and it was done. 